Hey guys, so in this video we're going to finish up our wiring our 110 volt circuit. Uh, all we had left was fuse 3. In the previous videos we wired up fuse 1 over to our VFD and fuse 6 going to our 48 volt transformer and our tri-power power supply. So now we want to concentrate on our control wiring, which is fuse 3. So what I did was I went ahead and made corrections to the drawing and I've uploaded new wiring diagrams along with the pinouts for the different connections that we're going to be making into the top of our enclosure. So before we get started, check the description below for the Dropbox link and download the updated version of the schematic along with the pinouts and there's also a drawing on there of the C1 contactor pinouts. So in order to prep for this video I went ahead and ran my 16 gauge 8 conductor SOOW cable and what I did was I stripped off about oh, 3 feet or so of the wiring and pulled the case off of it so I just had the bare conductors and I ran this into the top of my box using the uh, liquid tight 90 degree conductors let me see if I can get you a shot of that alright so all I did was just strip the cable back and then made the connection, got everything secure, and then figured out exactly how much cabling I'm going to need for each of the different conductors. I also went ahead and took the opportunity to label each wire following the pinout for the 8 conductor cable. And I also, because this is stranded, I went ahead and tinned the ends of each conductor. So now it's just a matter of wiring it up. Uh, I like to take and put these cable ties to kind of uh, just keep everything together. And one little tip I'd like to share on these cable ties. These things, you see these a lot. And if you're ever in a box troubleshooting or having to go through your wiring, a lot of people will take and just trim this off. But if you do that, it leaves a sharp edge right here. So an old timer, years ago, said, hey, if you just take and twist this off, like so, it makes it nice and smooth because it kind of heats it up and rounds it off and then it's not real sharp and if you rub your the back of your hand on it it won't cut you so I thought I'd share that tip with you now I'm just gonna run this in my cabling and make my connections so the first thing we need to do or the first wire that we come to here is for our solid state relay and that is wire number 108. Now it's come, it's going out this cabling to our control panel, our switch for our coolant, and it's going to go to our relay. In the previous video, we wired 111 to our outlet. We made this connection here, and this goes to this side of our solid state relay. And now we want to make the connection to the other side, and that is wire number 108 okay and that's our first connection and it's labeled 108 tuck that in there and then next wire needs to go over to power our outlet. This is wire 110. If you look here, you can see it goes from switch 6 to turn our computer 
and monitor outlets on and it goes to our outlets and that is this wire here now previously we I ran this wire because I was originally going to use a cannon plug up there but that's no longer the case so I'm going to disconnect this wire and we'll hook up the new wire okay because this is stranded I ended up putting a crimp on on here to connect to the outlet make sure that it's uh, secured I'm not really fond of those and if you've watched any of my videos you already know that but sometimes it's just the way it goes okay so we've got the coolant wire that wire bring this on in come down let's see next wire it's the next shortest wire here let's see what this is this is wire 104 for our holding circuit on our C1 contactor it goes to C1 terminal 6 terminal 6 is this top terminal right here The last one we have free. Okay, just shut out of that. Terminal six. Next we have wire. 106, 107. Now this is the wire that comes off of our key switch or our door switch or both. Uh, right now we don't have the door switch hooked up and I probably won't add that until later. So right now we're just going to bring the wire from our key switch down to our coil on C2 contact. That is right here. Then we have our ground wire. This wire goes up to our control panel for our rocker switch buttons. This allows them to provide a ground to the LED so that we can have it illuminated. So we just need to connect it down to our uh, terminal strip here. And we'll connect it right here beside this main one coming in. Like so. There we go. It's connected right there. Next we have our blue wire, which is 103. It goes to the other side of our C1 contactor for our holding circuit. It's C1 terminal 9. And that's down here on the bottom. C1 terminal 9. Uh, next we have wire 120. 120 goes to fuse Six, or in our case circuit breaker 6 it's a 10 amp circuit breaker and this will run up to our switches for our computer and our coolant so that comes off of fuse 6 now we already ran this wire but that's when we thought we were doing the cannon plugs and so I've got to actually see if I can pull this wire out which may be a chore now. Oh, there it comes. Okay, get rid of that wire. 
and then we'll replace it with this one. Okay. That provides power up to our switches. And that's secured. Bottom of fuse six right here or circuit breaker six. Next we have wire 102. 102 goes to fuse three. This is our one amp fuse. Actually it's a circuit breaker now. One amp and this is goes straight up to our control panel to our e-stop. And this provides power to our control circuit. So this goes to fuse three. Okay, take care of that. Okay, now that we have all eight of these wires connected inside our enclosure for our control circuit, there's also some secondary wiring that we need to go ahead and tidy up at this time. Uh, other than the eight conductors in the cable and that is our neutral wire for our C2, C1 and our fan and also put the power wire going to our enclosure fan. So we're going to go ahead and let's tidy those up now and get those connected. So the first thing I want to do is connect our neutral wires to our coils. Uh, these two pins here are for C1. Okay. And this will jump right over to C2 coil. And then we'll land it right here on our terminal strip to our ground strip. Okay. Okay, so now that we have our neutral for our C1 contactor and C2 contactor we also have to provide power to our C2 contactor from jumpered over from 104 here which is connected at C1 terminal 6 so I just made up a little jumper wire here and T1 terminal 6 wire 104 is up top here I'm going to connect to it. And it's got to go to the coil for C1. And this completes our holding circuit. And so our coil is right here. Right here is 104 coming in and then we're going to go over to jump over to our coil and then here's our return for our coil going to our neutral. That is this wire right here. So next we just need to connect power to our fan. Now we can connect here at C16 or we connect we can connect here at the coil. Since I already have two term two wires on that terminal, I'll go ahead and just connect it here on the coil. And we'll run 
this up our rice wine here. Might be easier to connect to our fan first. I just put crampons here on the end uh, because this fan will probably end up burning up at one time, uh, one point or another, and I'll need to replace it. So it's a good idea to put uh, these crampons here, these spade connectors. Our last wire is our neutral for our fan. It'll just go down to our neutral terminal strip here. These cable trays are really starting to fill up. Doesn't take much. So now we have our fan. So that, that finishes up tidying up these loose ends right here. And now we can move on to the other end of the eight conductor cable at the control box. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thumbs up if you liked the video. And most importantly, be safe.